The video was prepared especially for the AK Cashin channel. Greetings, friends. In today's video, we will talk about how to control the speed of a universal electric motor and understand how the TDA 1085 chip works. I will propose my version of a speed controller circuit with power maintenance, which can be found in the video description. To start, let's briefly review which electric motors we will be discussing today. Today, we will be talking about universal electric motors and commutator motors. Simply put, the central part of such motors, called the rotor, has several windings. The contacts of these windings are connected to the commutator. These are copper plates that go around the rotor. These windings are connected in such a way that the contacts come out on opposite sides of the commutator. Voltage is applied to them through conductive brushes made of graphite, sometimes with various additives. Around the rotor is the stator, which creates a magnetic field. When power is supplied to the rotor winding, the magnetic field created in this winding tries to rotate the rotor relative to the magnetic field created by the stator to stabilize. However, as soon as the rotor starts to move, the next winding comes into play, resulting in rotation. If we want more power from such a motor, we need to increase the voltage supplied. However, if a load is applied to the motor shaft, then, at the same voltage, the motor without a load will rotate faster, which is obvious. And here we come to the TDA 1085 chip. An excellent chip, on the basis of which very reliable speed control circuits for universal motors are assembled. Its main problem now is its unavailability, as its production seems to have stopped. If you know of a modern equivalent of such a chip, be sure to mention it in the comments. So let's figure out how the chip works so that, using all this in the future, we can create such a regulator on something else. Simplified, the following connection diagram for the TDA 1085 can be drawn. To the motor. In our case, the motor is universal, designed for use in 230V AC circuits. So we plug it into the outlet. To control the load, we add a triac, an element that allows us to cut the 50 Hz sine wave, which is supplied to the motor. And thus, less voltage will reach it over the period, and it will spin more slowly. And the control output. Accordingly, we connect it to the TDA 1085. And of course, it requires power. It turns out that each period of the sine wave, the TDA opens the triac. The engine is spinning, but the microchip needs to know the frequency so that when a load is applied to it, it can adjust the voltage. In other words, we need a speed sensor. In my case, this is a standard solution. A speed sensor, just like the motor from a washing machine. And here, there is a special magnet that, when rotating, induces a voltage in the winding, with the frequency of the induced voltage being higher. So, the engine spins faster, and this information goes to the 12th pin in the speed detector. Also connected to this unit are pins 4 and 11, where you can see RC circuits in the schematic. Essentially, this is where the conversion of an alternating signal into a certain voltage level is implemented through the charging and discharging processes of external capacitors. If desired, you can use a DC motor instead of a tachometer, which will rotate with the main engine shaft and generate a constant voltage. But then it should be immediately connected to the fourth pin, and the twelfth pin should be shorted to the eighth, which is the ground. Alright, we have obtained information about the engine's revolutions. Now we need to get information about which revolutions to maintain. For this, we have two inputs, the fifth and the sixth. The fifth input of the chip needs to be supplied with a voltage from zero to the supply voltage. This voltage is proportional to the revolutions we want to set. Therefore, in the circuit, there is a potentiometer here, which we use to set the voltage, a trimming resistor to limit the maximum revolutions, and an RC circuit to suppress the noise of the potentiometer so the engine doesn't jerk when changing revolutions. The sixth output is responsible for the acceleration rate, meaning the speed of change in velocity. Here you can also see a divider, which is formed by this resistor and the trimming resistor. That is, we can adjust or completely disable this smoothness. Again, a capacitor for stability. Now we have two voltages. The voltage that we set. And the voltage that resulted from the engine's pulse. All of this goes into the control unit, which generates a sawtooth signal that can be observed at the 14th pin. 
of the microchip. The difference between these voltages is amplified and at the 16th output. The microchip has elements for load compensation and the datasheet suggests selecting the parameters of these elements experimentally. The task of the microchip is to precisely synchronize with the network frequency and timely open the triac. Therefore, a pulse trigger generator controls the triac. These elements determine the shape of the sawtooth signal, which affects the duration and repetition frequency of the pulses. A signal from the current shunt is also applied here, meaning the microchip, in addition to maintaining power, also limits current surges that inevitably occur when switching windings during motor startup. You might ask, why is it necessary to synchronize with the network at all? You can simply send a PWM signal to the semiconductor and that's it, that's all. How is it done when adjusting with constant voltage? And with a MOSFET? But no, a triac, unlike a MOSFET, will only turn off. When the sine wave passes through zero after a low logic level is set on the control pin. This means we need to provide opening pulses considering that the triac will remain open until the end of the half cycle. If we simply apply a PWM signal, we will get something completely different from what we want to see. In essence, the control pulse generator block tracks zero and sends commands to the triac to open and close. And implementing such a working scheme using Arduino is not difficult, which is why these chips are no longer produced. However, there is another important part of the speed controller circuit that we need to discuss. It's the power supply. The TDA-1085 has a built-in voltage regulator, so theoretically it can be powered by unstable volts. However, I added an additional regulator in the circuit using an LM7815. And to get a little more than 15 volts, I raised the ground using a diode. For power supply, it's traditionally done either with a capacitive divider directly from the mains or with resistors. In this case, such a solution is justified by the design of the chip, which is intended for this mode of operation. Although there are versions of printed circuit boards with galvanically isolated power supplies, but as I understand it, this doesn't offer any significant advantages. On this resistor and capacitor, a voltage divider is formed. This resistor is used for discharging the capacitor. Next, the voltage is rectified by a diode and filtered by a capacitor. Then there's a 24 volt Zener diode and a current limiting resistor to prevent too much current from flowing through the Zener diode. Then there's another filtering capacitor. This diode can be omitted because the Zener diode, which works as a diode in forward bias, can replace it. But I thought it was more appropriate to include it. Share your thoughts on this in the comments section of the video. Well, moving on a 3-pin LM7815 and a couple of electrolytics LM7812 is used here as standby power for the sensors. You can also use an LM7805 if, for example, you want to attach some Arduino sensor. Links to the projects for this speed controller will be in the video description. Ultimately, with the TDA1085 chip, you can assemble a simple and reliable speed controller for a universal motor without using programming and microcontrollers and make it work. An old motor. In some machine in your workshop. I hope the video was interesting for you. If so, don't forget to support it with a like and a comment as this speeds up the release of new videos. I wish everyone good health and this was Andre with you. Goodbye.